Salaries are often a very sore subject in the nonprofit space, not by those who run them, but by the public and others who believe that nonprofit leaders should not make decent salaries or should be making less than those in the corporate space, right? And because the public is entitled to this information, you need to make sure that you are reporting it appropriately. So if you're interested in learning how you should be managing payroll and QuickBooks Online, how you should be reporting it, how it should show up in your financial statements, then you'll wanna keep watching. When booking salaries, the first thing you wanna get clear on is whether a portion of those salaries are being paid by a specific funding source. A lot of times when you get your grants, you'll get a grant agreement and they'll specify, you know, if it's restricted, it might say you can spend $10,000 on salaries, or you might get a general operating grant where you can decide where to spend the funds. But you want to be clear if any of the salaries in your organization are being covered by a funding source, because if they are, then you'll want to make sure that you're allocating that portion of the salary to the correct funding source. So you might be thinking, okay, I understand that, but then how do I do that? So you want to make sure that you're implementing a tracking system. And before we get into the details of that, the reason why that's important is because at the end of the month or mid month, or when you have an ad hoc audit, right? You want to be able to run reports in QuickBooks online that shows you how much income you've received, you've received from a certain source, and then also how much you've spent. That's going to be inclusive of salaries. And so if you got X grant for $100,000 and $10,000 of that was supposed to be to cover salaries, your financial reports should show that. So that's what we're talking about here today. How can you make sure that you're reporting on this properly? Now, employees whose wages are covered by a specific grant, they need to be tracking their time and activities back to that specific grant. This is especially important when employees have salaries or their salary are covered by multiple grants or multiple funding sources. And this is very common in the nonprofit space. So you want to be aware of that as well. Now, some of the work that they may or may not perform may not qualify, right? And so that's why tracking is important. And I'm going to give you an example. So let's say you are running Project Feed the Homeless and you have a program director whose salary is covered. But the grant agreement says that only the work that that program director performs specifically for the program is covered. Now, we know that sometimes a program director might be working on more than one program or there is some of their time that might be allocated to administrative um, things. And so in that case, you need to have a system that is tracking how much time that person actually spent on Project Feed the Homeless versus project build a house versus administrative tasks. Because when you're then some, um, running payroll and then you're posting payroll in QuickBooks Online, you wanna make sure that when you run, you know, salaries and wages expense for last month that we can clearly see that, you know, program director, it's split amongst those three, um, those three things. Project Feed the Homeless, project build a house, and then there's some administrative, you know, amounts, amounts that sit in administration. So that's what I mean by being clear on the funding sources. And this is super, super important because if anything is restricted and you can only spend those restricted funds on a portion of that salary, anything that is spent and it's not in line with that agreement, you can potentially owe that back to the funder. You don't want that. And so it's important to be clear, super clear on the grants that you have, what are the restrictions, if any, and if there are restrictions, then how are you specifically tracking that? Um, one of the things that I talked about in a previous video was a funding inventory tool, right? It's a spreadsheet that we've created and it's one that you can create for yourself, but essentially it lists out all of the different grants or funding sources that a particular organization has and then all of the details align with that. So if there's any reporting, when is it due, right? Are there any restrictions? all of the details so that you can make sure that you are following those to a T. Now let's get back into the video. So now you might be asking, well, how do I even track this, right? So before we get into QuickBooks Online, let's talk about your payroll provider. So many payroll providers have the ability to implement tracking codes. And so depending on how time is tracked, I'll speak from ex um, experience. I have a particular organization that I'm working with and they used codes. They have time codes in their payroll system, right? And so a lot of their workers have the ability to have the app 
on their phone and they're able to track their time according to the code. That then is also fed into the payroll system. So then when we go in to run payroll, we're able to clearly see, okay, you have five people on payroll. This is where they've spent all of their time. And sometimes we'll have, let's say again, that program director who has time that's recorded under time code A, time code B, and time code C. You have others who all their time might be in time code A, right? But the idea here is that we can specifically see where they spent their time because that then helps us to make sure that we're booking payroll in the right places once it's in QuickBooks Online. The next piece of that is making sure that your payroll too is then talking to your accounting software so you're not having to do double work. So for example, for this person, the same codes that we use in the payroll provider, we also have set up in QuickBooks Online so that they sync and so that they're talking to one another. A special caveat here are general operating grants or funding where you can decide where to spend the money. The reason why these are special cases is because with these amounts, you're determining how much is spread across a number of expenses. In that case, you need to make sure that you have a documented cost allocation methodology, which explains how you're even determining how much money goes to the different costs. This is key because auditors will request it and you need to be able to explain, I you know, decided that project A got $10,000 of this general operating grant because these people spend 10% of their time here and that's 10% of the grant, you know. That's just an example. It has to be detailed. Um, but if your organization does not have a cost allocation methodology and that's something that you want me to dive into, um, I can do a separate video on that because it really is its own topic in itself. If you'd like that, just let me know in the comments below. Now, the last part of this allocation, and I hope you're still with me, is allocating to the functional expense. So yes, you've allocated to the specific grants, but then you have to say whether those costs lie in fundraising, admin, or administration, right? And so this is also where that cost allocation methodology comes into play for those expenses that are like shared or that are not as directly tied to programs, right? And so that's super, super important. And that's the last part of that is making sure that you're allocating not only to the funding sources, but that you're also allocating to the functional expense. Because when you run that PL by class, right? Because we use classes to set up your functional expenses, you'll be able to see where those salaries lie. So, you know, are most of your most of the time spent, you know, in admin or programs, right? Because we also know funders, unfortunately, right, they have it set up in their mind how much they they want to see, right, in the certain buckets of the functional expenses. They tend to not want organizations to be too heavily leveraged in admin. And so it's important to be able to see these numbers and see them accurately so you can decide and analyze for yourself whether or not you're overly leveraged in one area. Now, of course, you want to be accurate, right? Because if there's a lot of people working in admin, there's just a lot of people working in admin. But you want to make sure that that's accurate. I can't tell you the amount of times that we've done these allocations. We send the reports, you know, to the client. They're like, wait, I think something may be wrong. You know, this person, we have them in admin, but they really should be in fundraising. So it's important to just be able to, you know, be able to eyeball that, dig into the numbers, especially when things seem odd. But you can't do that if you're not reporting appropriately. So make sure you have a process in place to run, not only track time, right, according to these um, these funding sources, but then to make sure that that gets into your payroll system and then that also gets into QuickBooks Online so that you are reporting appropriately. Now, part two of this video is down to literally how this looks on the financial statements. One of the scenarios that I have been coming across very recently and honestly commonly is that organizations are being too transparent on their P&L, on their statement of activities. And so I'm gonna give you an example. So on your statement of activities, you should have an account that indicates how much you are paying in salaries and wages. I have been seeing organizations go through and literally list out roles, titles, the person's name, and then the amount. That is way too much information to live on your statement of activities. Now, do you need to be able to determine how much X person has made? So for example, the executive director has made in a given period? Absolutely. That might even be something that management 
or the board wants to see and keep an eye on, but that is not something that should be reported um, so detailed on the, um, the income statement, right? You don't want to give that much level of detail. Now, if you're ever asked, right, by certain authorities, you know, that's a different story. But when you are creating your financial statements, you want to keep it very basic. You want to keep it to the natural categories. And so salaries and wages, that's all we need to see. How much did you spend on salaries and wages? What portion of those salaries and wages were covered by, you know, the different funding sources? And what portion of those salaries and wages are spread across the functional expenses? I don't need to see when I say, let me see your P&L, how much the program director is making specifically. Not to mention there might be some um, privacy and confidentiality clauses that are actually being violated by posting the individual salary that specific in that way. And so I want to remind you that, yes, you want to be transparent. Yes, you want to limit the amount of questions that are coming um, you know, to your organization, but you also want to be mindful of not overly sharing because sometimes you then, when you overly share things that are not warranted or don't even need to be shared, you actually invite more questions. And so Let's be mindful of that. The other side of that coin is not being transparent enough. So you're you're booking salaries and wages, but we can't tell if anything is covered by certain funding sources. We can't tell, you know, where they they fall within the different functional expenses. And that becomes an issue because it then becomes a violation of compliance, right? Because when you file your 990, you have to decipher that. And what ends up happening is at the end of the year, we're doing mental gymnastics, trying to figure out where everything lies when really this would just be a part of your day-to-day -day accounting process, right? So that when you're closing the books at the end of the month, this stuff is being appropriately reported and reviewed, right? Because we talked about your ability to review it ask questions and dig into the details. If you're not doing that until the end of the year, it's too late. And nine times out of 10, if you're doing it at the end of the year, it's not going to be 100% accurate. You're doing it manually, right? You're trying to estimate. No, we need specifics. And that's why you have to have a specific way for people to be tracking their time, but then also that cost allocation methodology so that you can backtrack how you got to those numbers. That's the key, being able to show proof of how you got to that number. And that's what a lot of organizations are missing, right? So some of you are being super transparent, almost to where we can say too transparent, and then some of you aren't being transparent enough. You have have to find the right balance and you have to make sure that you are recording these things correctly, accurately. No if, ands, or buts about it. Now, it might seem like I'm drilling in this kind of, you know, digging deep and going hard. And that's only because salary is a heavily scrutinized area, right? There's a lot of questions around, well, how did you determine that this person should make this amount? How did you determine, right, that this person's salary was so heavily in, you know, covered by the programmatic functional expense versus admin when they're the executive director, right? So you want to be able to back up right? Have sufficient evidence for what you're reporting. And that's why I am honing in on this because it's super important. And I've been on the other side, right? I am a former auditor. I've had to be on the other side asking these questions. And I've been on the side where there are no answers. And when there are no answers, we know that the audit report is not going to be favorable right? And we don't want that. So I hope that this video was helpful. I hope that this really broke down for you how you need to be thinking about managing payroll in QuickBooks Online. And I want to um, just add a little bit of a disclaimer here. You don't have to be running payroll in QuickBooks Online in order to do this. In fact, most of the organizations I work with use a payroll tool outside of Intuit. So some are using Gusto, some are using Paychex, some are using ADP. But you want to get with whoever you're using for payroll to, you know, make sure you have those time codes, make sure people are appropriately tracking their time, and then making sure that you have a process to make sure that information makes it into QuickBooks Online is being and is being recorded accurately. So don't forget that piece. I hope that this video was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you want me to make a video specifically on cost allocation, I can do that. Also, let me know that in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next one.